Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a very fun one because we are going to be looking at my Spotify wrapped. We are doing a little Spotify book tag. So basically what I did is I got my Spotify wrapped today and it's actually the first time I ever received a Spotify wrapped. I downloaded Spotify in August so even my current Spotify wrap is not completely um, for the entire year it's only for four months or not even three months but anyways today's video is going to be me shuffling my top 100 songs I ahead and picked some books or at least one book for each song um, and how it relates so this is actually a book tag that I just looked up I was like Spotify wrapped but for books and I saw this book tag and I thought it would be such a little fun little video so that's what we're doing today I actually already shuffled and yeah, I just shuffled, did the first five, and then I've spent some time picking out what books correlate to my five songs. These aren't my top songs, or actually one of them is my top song, but um, they're not, they're just all my top 100 songs shuffled. So anyways, let's, let's get into it. So we're going to start this off by going with Strip Club Music by Role Model. I love Role Model's new um, album, Prescription. It's one of my favorites. I actually went to his concert. It was my first ever concert this past October. This song is about a girl who becomes a sex worker despite being academically successful. Um, she starts working as a sex worker and people are very disapproving of this, but she makes money not only for herself, but she's also supporting her family. And I'm just gonna read a lyric from it. It's good grades, straight A's, and please her mother. Daddy worked two jobs that both went under. She found a job that paid and stayed the summer. Nice meals, high heels, and every color. The book that I picked to go with this is Most of All You by Mia Sheridan. I read this at the beginning of this year. It is, I really like Mia Sheridan. This book is a retelling of Redeeming Love, if you've read that by Francine Rivers. Um, or it's not, it's not classified as a retelling, but it's essentially the same plot line of that. The main character, Crystal, is a sex worker, so I just feel like that was very good. I mean, the song isn't a romantic song by any means, and the book does have romance in it, but anyways, I'm going to read the description of Most of All You by Mia Sheridan. It says, A broken woman. Crystal learned long ago that love brings only pain. Feeling nothing at all is far better than being hurt again. She guards her wounded heart behind a hard exterior and carries with it and her a deep mistrust of men who in her experience have only ever used and taken a man in need of help then gabriel dalton walks into her life despite the terrible darkness of his past there's an undeniable goodness in him and even though she knows that the cost crystal finds herself drawn to gabriel his quiet strength is wearing down her defenses and his gentle patience is causing her to question everything she thought she knew only love can mend a shattered heart crystal and gabriel never imagined that the world that the world which has stolen everything from them would bring them a deep love like this except fate will only take them so far and now the choice is theirs harden their hearts once again or find the courage to shed their painful past i genuinely really enjoyed that book i ended up reading it four stars and yeah i would just recommend it i apologize i feel like the lighting looks really weird i turned on my overhead lights hopefully that makes it a little bit better but we're moving on to our second song which is actually my number one top song um of the year which is crazy or for the past three months and that is false god by taylor swift i love this song so much i am shocked that it's my top song i will be honest um but that's fine we're not going to talk about it um this song is about a love that is so deep that it's almost religious and the voice that's seen is almost like concerned about how much or how deeply in love they are like they're almost concerned like idolizing this person which is where like the term false god comes from we're all the relationship again Taylor Swift like draws it back to religious theme themes the relationship they're so in love it's gonna persist kind of like religion so a quote or a song lyric I have or a few song lyrics is but we might just get away with it religions in your lips even if it's a false god we'd still worship we might just get away with it the altar is my hips even if it's a false god we'd still worship this love we'd still worship this love we'd still worship this love so yeah i just like from that song i just get two people that are very in love with each other i do, i will say the song has like sexual undertones in it and i thought the perfect book for that was a court of mess and fury by sarah j moss i mean come on guys they're like extremely devoted to one another i know this the second book is them kind of finding their love together but you can't tell me that false god does like that 
that little lyric portion does not fit Favor and Raisin. Come on. Don't tell me it doesn't. Favor survived Arantha's clutches to return to the Supreme Court, but at a steep cost. Though she now has the powers of the High Fae, her heart remains human and it can't forget the terrible deed she performed to save Tamlin's people. Nor has Favor forgotten her bargain with Ryzen, High Lord of the Fear Night Court. As Favor navigates its dark web of politics, passion, and dazzling power, a greater evil looms, and she might be key to stopping it. But only if she can harness her harrowing gifts, heal her fractured soul, and decide how she wishes to shape her future, and the future of a world cleaved in two. Bang. On to song number three, we have You're On Your Own Kid, track five of Taylor's newest album. And yeah, this just this song is so good because it kind of tells the story of Taylor Swift on her own. Because you see, or I'm not saying it has to be Taylor Swift, but we do know it's like kind of autobiographical. But anyways, Taylor Swift in this song is portraying a girl who has this unrequited love. Um, there's even the lyric, I wait patiently, he's gonna notice me, it's okay, we're the best of friends. It's this love that is unrequited, like, changing. And as the song goes on, you see, like, this character, they want, they want people surrounding them, they want all these things, and they're, like, they're attempting to use the outside world as a way for them to be happy. And one lyric from that is, I hosted parties and started my body like I'd be saved by a perfect kiss. So almost relying on outwardly things to make them innerly happy. But as the song ends, they're kind of realizing like, I am on my own. Like I always have been, I'm on my own. I can do this. I control the narrative. Kind of like that type of vibe. Book I picked is Birds of California by Katie. Um, I actually haven't read this, but I feel like it kind of fit it. Um, also, Barnes and Noble also said this was a good match for your on your own kids, so I will give credit where it's due. Former child actor Fiona St. James dropped out of the spotlight after a spectacularly public crash and burn. The tabloids called her crazy and self-destructed and said she lost her mind. Now in her late twenties, Fiona believes her her humiliating past is firmly behind her. She's finally regained a modicum of privacy and she won't let anything or anyone mess it up. Unlike Fiona, Sam Fox, who played her older brother on the popular television show Birds of California, loves the perks that come with being a successful Hollywood actor. Fame, women, parties, money. When his current show gets canceled and his agent starts to avoid his calls, the desperate actor enthusiastically signs on for a Birds of California revival, but to make it happen, he needs Fiona St. James. Against her better judgment, Fiona agrees to have lunch with Sam. What happens next takes them both by surprise. Sam is enthralled by Fiona's take-no-prisoners attitude, and Fiona discovers a lovable goofball behind Sam's close-up, ready face. Long drives to the beach, late nights at dive bars, theirs is a kind of kitschy, kitschy romance Hollywood sells. But just like in the rom-coms Fiona despises, there's a twist that threatens her new love. Sam doesn't know the full story behind her breakdown. What happens when she reveals the truth? So good. A song, fourth song we have is Cola by Lana Del Rey. She was one of my, she was my second top artist. So super exciting. The song is kind of, there's a lot of controversy surrounding the song. I mean, the first lyric, it, it really gets you going. Like, if you know the lyric, you know. Basically how I interpreted this song is it's kind of a mix of the American dream. Like you get a lot of American themes in it. But the main part of it is there's some sort of affair or relationship going on with an older man. And it seems that that relationship is abusive, um, like, because he is a man of position or power. Position of power and or has a lot of money. Even, like, some people have said it's about Harvey Weinstein and things like that. Um, Lana Del Rey said it's sort of like a Harvey Weinstein character, but she wasn't intending this art to be about him. But anyways, here are some lyrics from that song I have. I got a taste for men who are older. It's always been, so it's no surprise. Um, and that kind of plays on, that lyric is kind of what I've chose my books around. So the first one I have is Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas. I actually haven't read this. It is on my TBR, so yeah. Um, anyways, it says, Jordan, he took me in when I had nowhere else to go. He doesn't use me, hurt me, or forget about me. He doesn't treat me like I'm nothing, take me for granted, or make me feel unsafe. He remembers me, laughs with me, and looks at me. He listens to me, protects me, and sees me. I can feel his eyes on me over the breakfast table, and my heart pumps so hard when I hear him pull in the driveway after work. I have to stop this. It can't happen. My sister once told me there are no good men, and if you find one, he's probably unavailable. Only Pike Lawson isn't the unavailable one. I am. I took her in because I thought I was helping. She'd cook a few meals and clean up a little bit. It was an easy arrangement. As the days go by, though, it's becoming anything but easy. I have to stop myself 
I have to stop my mind from drifting to her and stop holding my breath every time I bump into her in the house. I can't touch her and I shouldn't want to. The more I find my path crossing hers though, the more she's becoming a part of me. But we're not free to give in to this. She's 19 and I'm 38 and I'm her boyfriend's father. Unfortunately, they both just moved into my house. So I'm not saying that that's necessarily what Cola is about. That would maybe be more of like a Lolita song, but I feel like the plays of like, he is a 38 year old man, she's 19 years old, kind of plays into that, the age difference thing. And the other book that I picked, which I think really ties into both the American dream and the kind of abusive relationship, is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This book was one of the hardest books I've ever read. Um, and just like I said, it kind of plays into the Lolita vibe where it is a, I'm, I'm just going to read the back of it because I don't want to spoil anything. So 2000, bright, ambitious, and yearning for adulthood, 15 year old Vanessa Y becomes entangled in an affair with Jacob String, her magnetic and goalful 42 year old English teacher. 2017. Amid the rising wave of allegations against powerful men, a reckoning is coming due. Strain has been accused of sexual abuse by a former student who reaches out to Vanessa, and now Vanessa suddenly finds herself facing an impossible choice. Remain silent, firm in the belief that her teenage self willingly engaged in this relationship, or redefine herself in the events of her past. But how can Vanessa reject her first love, the man who fundamentally transformed her and has been a persistent presence in her life? Is it possible that the man she loved as a teenager and who professed to worship only her may be far different from what she has always believed? Alternating between Vanessa's present and her past, My Dark Vanessa juxtaposes memory and trauma with the breathless excitement of a teenage girl discovering the power her own body can wield. I think that book, obviously, like, content warnings on that, but I, I just feel like that book perfectly describes Cola, like, I, I really do, so, yeah. Okay, guys, we are at our last song, and that is Do I Want to Know by the Arctic Mon Monkeys. I mean, come on, this lineup is so good, so exciting. So, anyways, Do I Want to Know is about someone who's fallen in love, and they're so in love with this person, but the person isn't giving them anything or as much so it's almost like unrequited love but they are in a relationship so one person is more invested than the other and obviously you know that can create changing dynamics but the question is like do i want to know is a person who's really in love with their partner they're wondering like do i want to know if they don't love me do i want to know if they're cheating do i want to know all these things that could tell me that they don't love me that's kind of how i interpret the song as you can tell i'm very passionate about this song the lyric I said is, do I want to know if this feeling flows both ways? Okay, and the two books I have here are both by Colleen Hoover, which I know, sorry, I'm not giving you like groundbreaking books, but the first one is Regretting You, and the reason I picked this is because of the mother's storyline. If you know, you know, I'm not going to say too much. I will read what the synopsis says. Morgan Grant and her 16-year-old daughter Clara would like nothing more than to be nothing alike. Morgan is determined to prevent her daughter from making the same mistake she did by getting pregnant and married way too young. Morgan puts her own dreams on hold. Clara doesn't want to follow in her mother's footsteps. Her predictable mother doesn't have a spontaneous bone in her body. With warring personalities and conflicting goals, Morgan and Clara find it increasingly difficult to co coexist. The only person who can bring peace to the household is Chris, Morgan's husband, Clara's father, and the family anchor. But that peace is shattered when Chris is involved in a tragic and questionable accident. The heartbreaking and long-lasting consequences will reach far beyond just Morgan and Clara. While struggling to rebuild everything that crashed around them, Morgan finds comfort in the last person she expects to. Clara turns to the one boy she's been forbidden to see. With each passing day, new secrets, resentment, and misunderstandings make mother and daughter fall further apart, so far apart, it might be impossible for them to ever fall back together again. If you've read that book or you plan on reading it, just I'm talking about the mother's point of view when it goes like, do I want to know? So book is All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover again, and this is Quinn and Graham's perfect love is threatened by their imperfect marriage. The memories, mistakes, and secrets that have been built up over the years are now tearing them apart. The one thing that could save them might also be the very thing that pushes their marriage beyond the point of repair. All Your Perfects is a profound novel about a damaged couple whose potential future hinges on promises made in the past. So yeah, this is a heartbreaking thriller that asks can a resounding love with a perfect beginning survive a lifetime between two imperfect people. And I just, that song, or that book kind of asks like, do I want to know in two parts of the books? And I think that is just perfect. That is going to be the end of this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing the Spotify book tag wrap up type thing. Spotify wrap up book 
tag. I think that's what it's called. I'm, I'm actually not sure. Let me know if you guys want to see another book tag and I would definitely do that. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Peace and love. Bye guys.